Hey there! So today we're going to do a little computer upgrade video. This is my laptop. This is an Acer Aspire 1810T. And I definitely like this computer. It's been good over the years. Uh, it's a small computer. The screen's only 11.6 inches, um, which is about the size of netbooks. That said, this is not a netbook. Uh, it has uh, a full power Intel Core processor in it, um, so it's a very powerful machine. Um, it's very thin, it's a little under an inch thick, I believe. Uh, this is actually the first generation of what they now call Ultrabooks. Um, another thing I really like about this computer is the battery life. Uh, since day one, it's been incredible. Even now, several years into the original battery, it'll get six plus hours to a charge. So just the battery life, very good on this. Um, but like I said, it's, it's getting a couple years old now and thought it was time for an upgrade. So what I ended up buying was this. This is a Samsung 840 Pro SSD. And so I'm gonna install this into the machine and see how much faster it goes and ultimately determine, you know, was it really worth buying? Cause these aren't exactly cheap. Um, this is a 128 gig version and it cost $110 on Amazon. Uh, for that price, you could get about a one terabyte hard, regular hard drive. So cost per megabyte significantly higher for these SSDs. And so we'll just, you know, do some benchmarking and see, is it really worth the upgrade? For the volume video clips, I wasn't quite sure what order to do it in. And what I decided to do was to edit it together in the order that puts the most interesting stuff first. So first I'll do the before and after benchmark tests with the old hard drive and the new SSD. And then after that I'll edit in the clips showing how I backed up and put in the new hard drive and then restored my data and also any changes necessary to make the operating system work with the new drive. For this first test, we'll test boot up speed. So we'll go ahead and turn it on, start a timer. Now, as the computer's booting, uh, one thing you'll notice is I'm running Windows XP. And what can I say other than I like XP? Every program I want to run runs on Windows XP, and XP is faster than Windows 7 or Windows 8. So, you know, like the saying goes, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. And there's really no reason for me to upgrade to a newer operating system. Um, yes, Windows XP is going to be out of support in like a month from now, but that doesn't really bother me. I'm, I know how to protect an operating system, whether or not it's still being updated. So I'm not concerned with it. And they're stopping the time. So we got about 40 seconds here to, to boot up and we'll try it next with the SSD. And now the boot up time with the SSD. So there you can see, that was about half the time. So definitely boots up much quicker. Another test I wanted to run is starting a large application. So I've got GIMP here, which is probably the largest application on my computer. And so we'll go ahead and start that and time it. If you're not familiar with GIMP, it's a really good photo editing pr program. It's not quite on par with Photoshop, but it is totally free, so it's worth checking out. So there, more or less 29 seconds to load up. And with the SSD, So about 19 seconds, so 
It was quicker, but not lightning quick. Not quite as quick as I was expecting it to be. Next test I wanted to run is power consumption. These SSDs are supposed to take less power, which for a laptop will translate into longer battery life. So what I've gone and done here is I've removed the battery and running just off AC. So we're just getting, we're taking the battery out of the equation. And I've also turned the wireless off here. So I'm trying to get just as, you know, as much of the machine as possible, nothing else. And then over here, the AC jack is plugged into a kilowatt. And at idle, you can see we're pulling about, I'd say 11 watts average, which isn't a whole lot for a computer. And then also we'll go ahead and copy a folder here and under copying a lot of files. So it's up to 17 watts while doing a big copy. So next we'll test the SSD and see if we get better performance. Now for power usage at idle, so we've got 10 watts, which is one watt less than before, not a whole lot. And let's go ahead and do a large file copy. And it's actually one watt more than the rotational hard drive. So it's hard to say if there's a power savings. Maybe during idle, but during file copy, it might actually pull more watts than the rotational hard drive. So I'd say power usage is probably just a break even. So another test is weight. Is there a weight difference between these two drives? And if so, how much? So let's put the hard drive on the scale here. Right at 100 grams. And if we stick the SSD on, wow. 46 grams, so over 50 grams, which if I remember correctly, that's going to come out to about 2 ounces weight difference. So that's a noticeable weight difference there. So I wanted to show how exactly I was going to back up and install and then restore the data. And I'm not going to reinstall Windows Fresh. I'm going to keep my current copy of Windows. So what I've got going here is this thumbstick has a bootable copy of Windows on it. It's something called Windows PE, and it's actually a totally free version of Windows that you can download and you can burn onto a thumbstick and then boot the computer, and the copy of Windows on the hard drive is not touched. So this allows you to do backups and restores without any of the files being locked or anything like that. And then I've also got an external hard drive here, so I'm gonna do a backup onto this and then restore from that later. And I'm not going to go into the details of how to create Windows PE on a thumb drive. It literally would take an hour to uh, show how to do that, but you can Google it, and there's documentation from Microsoft on how to do it. And then for the actual backup, I'm going to do an image backup and another tool from Microsoft called ImageX. And here's what the command line looks like. And it's basically going to back up the hard drive onto this external drive here. So go ahead and start this, and I'm guessing this will probably take, I don't know, half hour, hour at least, so we'll come back when it's done. So removing the old hard drive, installing the new one is pretty simple. You flip it over, and there's an access panel here which just has two screws. Take that out, and I've already loosened the drive here, but kind of loosen the drive, and then there's a single connector here. Take it out, plug in the new one, and you're good to go. So now that the new drive is installed, I've again booted WinPE off the thumb drive. And for older versions of Windows, you need to format the hard drive, or I should say the SSD, in a very particular way to guarantee that the alignment matches up with the SSD, else you'll do unnecessary wear to the drive. And if you just format using the operating system, it's not going to work. So inside of here I'm using a program from Microsoft called disk part and right here is a special command line that you can use that'll ensure that it's offset to line up with the sector sizes and so once I format the drive then I can uh, restore my disk image so the next step is we've got the USB drive plugged in that has the backup and we'll again use image X with this command line and it's going to restore my data back onto that SSD after which I can just reboot the computer and Windows will start up just fine.
Okay, so now that the SSD is installed, we want to configure the operating system to work with it to maximum efficiency. Uh, like I was saying, older operating systems like XP don't really know how to handle SSDs, so we need to take a couple of steps to ensure basically the long, longest life of the SSD and also maximum performance. Now, if you read on the internet, there's a lot of people that tell you to do this and that, and um, I've gone through the different things and I've kind of applied my own technical knowledge of Windows to determine what I think is the best because some of it it just seems a, a black magic you know should I do this should I not uh, first thing you definitely want to do is go into the BIOS and make sure AHCI is turned on for your IDE controller and that's also going to require special drivers to be loaded uh, next very important thing you want to do is make sure the partitions are properly aligned and that's when I did the uh, WinPE and align the partitions. That took care of that. So next thing I've got here is a registry file that has some settings that I recommend. Um, first off, you don't want to ever manually defrag an SSD. And this first registry setting right here will disable XP. will do some background defragment from time to time. And so this will disable that. Um, it'll also do some idle time optimizations, which is the second key here, and so that one you definitely want to turn off. Now, down here, this one, um, some people recommend turning off what they call 8.3 file name generation, and there's also a second one here for last access updates. As far as the 8.3 file names, I was suspicious that that would do anything, and so I actually ran some tests, and it turns out there is no benefit whatsoever to disabling 8.3 file name. You can still do it if you want, but you won't see any benefit. So that's why this that particular one's commented out. But uh, disabling last access, that does make a difference. Every time you click on a directory, XP updates the directory that you looked in there, updates a timestamp. So you want to turn off all that writing to disk as you browse around. So that one's a beneficial. This one here, large system cache. I couldn't find exactly the benefit to doing this. Um, I, so I just went ahead and uh, I'm not going to do it for now. I may do it later. Uh, another one that a lot of people recommend is to disable the Windows Prefetch program. And Prefetch helps things load quicker which may or may not be beneficial on an SSD or may not have much benefit, but um, the prefetcher is mostly a read-only. It doesn't do a lot of writing, so I'm going to keep the prefetcher enabled. Um, some other changes you want to make is you want to go in and um, the indexing service, a lot of people recommend turning this off. Um, it just scans your hard drive to make searches faster, but with an SSD that may not be necessary. The indexer, just like prefetching, is mostly a read-only operation, so you could leave it enabled. Now, that said, I don't like the index service with Windows. There are better programs out there for indexing your hard drive. Um, if you're interested, look for a program called Everything, or there's another one called Locate32. Far better than the built-in one with Windows. So I've beaten, before I had the SSD, I disabled it, but if you come into Control Panel Services, here's the index service, and you can disable it, and that's how you shut that off if you so desire. Another thing you want to do is go into Device Manager under Drives and find your new SSD. Go Properties, Policies, and you want to make sure this is enabled right here, and this will give you more performance when you're operating with an SSD. And some people recommend going as far as to disabling the page file. And I personally do not recommend that. Uh, Windows does not like operating when there's no page file on there. You can get yourself into problems and whatnot. So I recommend keeping the page file on there. It's not going to do a whole lot to turn that off. And then the last thing you want to look into is XP doesn't have what's called the trim command. And every time, or as you use the hard drive, and files get deleted, uh, there's a trim command which will help optimize the drive. XP doesn't do it. Newer versions of Windows have that built in. Uh, the solution to this is your SSD probably came with a program you can download and run. Uh, for Samsung drives, they call it the Samsung Magician. For Intel drives, they call it the Intel SSD Toolbox. 
but just download that tool from the manufacturer and run it maybe every other week, every once a month, something like that, and it'll run the trim command and optimize your drive. So I guess the last question is, was this upgrade really worth it? And it's kind of hard to say. I, I think the jury's mixed on it. The drive is faster, but it's not knock your socks off fast. Um, it is a little bit lighter. Power consumption, it's hard to say if it's better. It's supposed to be, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it is, as you saw. Um, and the capacities, I mean, they're just so small compared to rotational hard drives, so it's just hard to say if it's, if it's worth it or not. I would say you'd have to look at it a case-by-case -case situation. If you have a, just a little bit of data on your hard drive, like I only had 30 gigs of data on here, then it's worth it because you can pick up 128 gigabyte SSD for about a hundred bucks. But if you've got 500 gigs or more of data on there, the cost of an SSD to hold all that is very high and it's probably not worth the cost of upgrading. So that's definitely one thing to consider. I think another thing that you should really consider is the CPU inside your computer. If your CPU is pretty slow, I don't know that your, an SSD is going to provide a lot of improvement. A lot of the times you're going to be CPU bound, uh, whereas if your CPU is fast, then your current the bottleneck in your current computer is going to be your hard drive. So in there, an SSD is a, a benefit. So you just got to kind of weigh the cost of if it's worth it to you or not. Um, definitely one thing I would suggest if you do this upgrade, go ahead and pick up something like this. These are just little external cases. You can put your old hard drive in here. I mean, these things are cheap. You can get them for $10 or less probably. And these make a great way of backing up your hard drive and other data onto here. So pick up one of these, stick your old hard drive in it. That's definitely a, a good buy. So I don't know. I'm glad I did this upgrade, but yeah, I guess I was hoping for a little bit more speed improvement out of it, but yeah, it should help this laptop to run nice and fast for a while now.